But thank you for coming. Uh, Praying Aloud Workshop. If you're here for some uh, suggestions and something to enrich your own personal prayer life, welcome. Uh, but I was, uh, and I took note of uh, uh, Judy Cobb's comment in the sermon that as disciples, we want to share love. And so I'm looking for uh, emphasizing a prayer life where you have an opportunity to touch the life of another person with prayer. And so uh, right now there is a pens in the middle and would you please pass them around and you all should have a three by five card. And I'm giving you 15 seconds starting in just a second to write what is prayer. I think I can do that. What is prayer? Go. Almost half of you gave the same definition. Prayer is talking to God. And I'm going to disagree with you. That's a method of prayer. You can pray silently. You can talk aloud. You can fold your hands. What this, of course, is going to be is talking about the content of prayer as well as what is prayer. And I've got a couple of things I want to show you, and I've given you sheets. I was going to print praying aloud at the top, but I got up this morning, and the uh, computer was all packed up and ready for me to go, so there was no way to get the printer going, you know, to type praying aloud workshop so you can take notes. But we are hoping for an evaluation sheet, so if anything rings your bell or you think it's important, write it down so that when you get together afterwards to talk in your groups as you eat uh, afterwards, you, know, you have something to remind you about it. But I would, um, as I was trying to thinking and I opened up my mouth and said I'd take this workshop, uh, what is prayer? I first of all think prayer is a fantastic gift from God. It's incredible that God the almighty God of creation, of salvation, of, of the power to live the life of faith, cares to hear from us. God cares for you. And I think one of the objects of what I'm going to call a prayer ministry is letting other people whom you come into contact with know that that you are convinced that God cares for you. Because secondly, prayer is a way of saying you believe in God. Would you pray if you didn't believe in God? What would be the use? But you know, God says he welcomes our prayers and that we now have a chance to show uh, that we know of Jesus' love and we want to Share that with others. We want to touch people with something positive in our lives. It's the invitation from God for us to share our hopes, our dreams, our uh, desires as we seek to live our faith. When I was a kid, I wanted a toy uh, cart, you know, one of those things you pedal with your feet and you rolled it around. My brother had one. My mother said he could share he didn't. So I prayed, and I prayed, and I think I wore God out praying for a new car for me. Red, if it could be possible. Christmas came. No car. And that night, my mother came into our bedroom, as she always did, and said, it's time to pray. And I said, I'm not praying. He didn't do what I wanted. And all too often we get into our minds, you know, it's what I want that's important when we should be the emphasis on how can my faith make a difference. And when my mother found out why I was not praying, my brother got a talking to like he never got one before and I got to ride in that little <laughs> car. So you see, God did answer, but not in the way which I expected. Jesus says, ask and it will be given you, seek and you shall find, and knock and it will be open to you. He doesn't say maybe. So prayer is an important part of the life of a disciple. And I liked uh, your emphasis this morning on being a disciple. Um, not just a believer, not just someone whose web, head got wet with baptism, but a person who wants to make a difference and share your faith.
So the first part I want to talk about today is praying written prayers. We're going to do several different categories of prayers. But, uh, and it's always good if you're in a situation where people ask you to pray to have something up your sleeve. Pastor, it's time for the church supper to begin. Will you pray? Do you want to pray? (laughs) What pastor doesn't want to pray? But um, I've had the uh, uh, wonderful experience. It's time for our church supper now. And if you'll join me in prayer and another person prayed. You can pray. Not just pastors. Even in a public setting of... uh, of it. But if you're going to pray a written prayer, and there's some beautiful written prayers, there are some things you should know. Number one, pray, read them before you pray. When I was new out of, of a seminary, I'd get up in front. We used to have what we called the collect. Now we call it the prayer of the day. And blah, 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 blah. And... Uh, I got caught a couple of times because what I said was not what the collect actually said. And uh, I've learned now to read all the lessons, read all the prayers, make certain that I know everything before the lector gets up to speak in church. So if you're going to use a written prayer, and please remember, all prayer is important. But read it before you are called upon to say it. Notice punctuation that's there for a reason and for a purpose. And if you need to, if you're going to have a copy that you're going to read off of, mark the important words or the things you think that are important. Pray it several times. Not just once, but till you're familiar with the words. And some of you who may date back to my uh, time of ancient history... Maybe you went to confirmation class and had to memorize. It's a wonderful discipline, but we don't emphasize it so much. But anyway, all of these things happen to us when you're praying a written prayer. So, tomorrow, this is the prayer of the day for All Saints Day. Just look at it for a minute. As you read it, there are two sentences so there's, you're supposed to note that. There's commas in there. There are words which maybe you think are more important than others. I once went to a church. I had to go to the seminary class, uh, to go to different denominations and listen, witness one of their worship. We went to this one church and I heard the pastor say, Oh God, from whom come all holy desires, all just counsels, all just works that we see. You would us your servants, that peace with the world cannot get them. And he did that whole prayer in one breath. Well, I'm not saying God didn't listen to the prayer, but boy, it sir didn't, I didn't listen too much to it. So, let me. Almighty God, You have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints and lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. There are wonderful, beautiful prayers that are written out so that if you're trying to say, well, if I'm going to have to open the meeting, uh, well, you can find some resources for that. Scripture. Wonderful prayers in Scripture. I once had an occasion, I went to the hospital the wo- a woman had, uh, was eight and a half months pregnant, but she also had lupus. And she went into a coma. Baby is born, stillborn. And I went to the hospital one night to see her. And I, walked, I was ushered into a room, and her husband looked up at me and said, She's gone. She's gone. What would you do? Well, we were sitting. They were sitting around the table. I sat down with them. And I said, "Hold hands," and I prayed. 
Lord, now let your servant go in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Right out of Luke's gospel. Use the things that you know that you sing in church as some of the songs we sang in church today. Lord, let my, uh, uh, my life be a light. I got the words twisted around. Um, you can use those things. They're, they're meant to be used. Uh, Psalms. Oh, my gosh. What's your favorite psalm? 101. Okay. Anybody Psalm 23? Okay, that's another. How about Psalm 46, you Lutherans? Yeah. You know, God is our refuge and strength. He read it last week, right? The Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Not bad. Uh, my, one of my favorites, which I've used quite a few times, is the 130th Psalm. Out of the depths of our cry unto you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. A beautiful psalm. A most wonderful verse in all the Bible, I think, is in there. There is forgiveness with you that you may be feared or reverenced or worshipped. And if you have a reservoir of, of, of these things that you have in your mind already, then you're in a position to sort of respond more naturally than if, <gasps> what will I say? And it's, there's no right, no, no uh, problem to say, oh, Lord, we don't know what to say now, especially in uh, uh, some extenuating circumstance, terrible uh, circumstance in a person's life. Or maybe it's joyous. And Now, how can I have a joyful so- prayer? We're always supposed to pray solemn prayers. I'm, well, oh, come on. Uh, I'm so happy to be able to pray, Lord. Nothing wrong with that at all. Liturgy. Um, uh, even a contemporary worship has a set order to it. Use the phrases in the fra- um, that you're used to. And, well, if you're really saying, I still don't know what, go to Barnes & Noble and look in their religion so- uh, section. They have a lot of books on prayer there. Just one caveat. When you read a prayer, make certain that the prayer expresses the faith you believe. There's nothing wrong with taking prayers from another denomination or even from another religion, but always make certain that they center around a prayer to God who loves you, who sent his son to die for you, and who is with you at all times. Praying from the heart. One of the things uh, I think what we need to do is to try and be disciplined in prayer in the sense that you realize the situation you find yourself in. One of the things I'm going to be doing is handing out to you a card. We're going to divide up into some groups and ask, give you a situation and your group then develop an outline or a prayer for that situation. I've got some happy ones and I've got some rather sad ones. They're 50-50, so... We'll divide up in just a little bit. Focus on the need. What is it that has happened? And in a sense, have already in your mind an outline of how you pray. This is what I taught my confirmation classes. Um, Say hello to God. Remember the psalm for the, uh, the, the day that we prayed just a little bit ago for All Saints Sunday? Almighty God, hello. You know, when you pick up a phone, and it's the first thing you do is identify who you're saying. Say something about God. You have sent your son to share uh, to our world and our life and to bring us into relationship with you. Help me then to be able to express that love for you in the way I interact with others and to give glory to your name. Amen. I'm not saying you have to be so disciplined, oh, I left a part out. Or that you just can't pray from the heart. But it helps you in a situation if you have some kind of a guideline what you're going to do. Now, prayer is full of vim, vigor, and spirit. 
Almighty God, we thank you. Well, there are some people who pray that way. Uh, I'm not comfortable with it because I never grew up with that. But that is a valid form of prayer. If that's your style, go with it. Don't be afraid to uh, be full, express your feelings, let something of you come out in the situation as it's happening. But make fe certain that your feelings just don't overwhelm everything. People get done, you've said praise Jesus about 80 times in your prayer. I've heard some people, oh, praise Jesus, oh, praise Jesus, and then say words and praise Jesus. Um, I'm certainly not against praising Jesus, but uh, it um, can become rather distracting. But one of the things which I want to emphasize when we talk about praying is there are no rules or regulations about how you pray. Just that we pray trusting in God, that we pray relying on God, and that we pray that we know God will hear and answer. How? I can't tell you. I was um, at a funeral once um, for a, a good friend at, in a former parish, and I was asked to come back by the pastor to be part of that service. And we're at the committal, the man was a veteran, and they began to play taps. And I started to cry. And Linda, the pastor, said, we're crying. I said, let him see we're human. I think that's what you're trying to get at. Um, when I say don't overwhelm, there's nothing wrong with crying with a person. Weep with those who weep. Uh, born with those who mourn. Laugh with those who laugh. Let that be your circumstance. But um, when I say that your feelings don't overwhelm, that, yeah, it, it, it can over, uh, overwhelm and, and suddenly lose control. That's what I'm thinking of. And perhaps maybe you're praying and maybe one of the prayer requests I'm going to give out will remind you of something. And you just have to stop for a minute. You, it's nothing wrong with saying, let's stop and think and pray silently for a moment. But let it be, uh, I'm thinking in the term of ministry, <laughs> My wife always says she's watching the watch as I'm preaching. She's not above, and I appreciate that. Last Sunday, I guess I really liked my sermon because I went on and on and on and on and finally stopped. Yes? I was thinking um, about the feeling part. A lot of times you're praying personally for yourself for what's happening in your life. But when you're asked to pray, you're asked to pray for them, right? And and that's a toughie that that's like the switch a little bit of trying to say, I'm dying here, but I need to express part of that, but I need it for them. So I try to look at the people, and then I'm not as aware of what I... I don't know if this makes any sense, but... If I'm looking at you, then I'm trying to say, what does she need to hear more than what I'm feeling? Does that make any sense? As a pastor, I've been called upon quite a few times in some very tough situations, and I've cried with people and I've laughed with people. But I try to keep in mind as, uh, it is Judy, right? Judy reminded us, I'm praying not just for myself, but for them. But you can't divorce yourself from somebody you know and are emotionally involved in. I certainly never want to be the way that I don't feel anything when I come into a funeral or anything like that. I think that would be the worst thing possible. I have a little biography. Oops. Uh, don't forget posture. I noticed today some people were raising their hands.
My wife and I went to the Community of Joy Church in um, Glendale, Arizona. Um, and their first song was, Lift Up Your Hands to Jesus. And there were people all over the place going like this. And my wife turned to me and said, are you sure this is Lutheran? <laughs> I said, well, they got the Lutheran Book of Worship in the pew, so it must be a Lutheran church. But there are different postures which you can pray. If, if um, I, I once had a person come to me, well, I guess you would expect a person to come to the pastor who was concerned about something they had done in the past and wanted to confess it. And what did I do? I said, let's kneel. And we knelt on the floor and uh, had a prayer. There's kneeling, there's uh, lifting up your hands, there's praise, there's silence. And I uh, really was amiss because I had planned really to start this workshop on praying aloud with a prayer. Best laid plans of mice and men go straight. It's all going to have you hold hands. That's why I wanted you all here in the center. Uh, but you, hey, it's good to have a bigger congregation rather than a smaller one, right? Um, we didn't do that. But uh, the, the things you do as you pray say a lot about you and mean a lot to the people you're praying for. See, I'm thinking of prayer as a ministry for others. And you can take from that and learn to enrich your own prayer life. But to be able to share the good news that you believe that Jesus loves all people. The problem we have is living that. Some resources. Of course, I already pointed out to you the Bible. There is a publication from the uh, Fortress Press called Sundays and Seasons. It's, um, I don't have a copy with me. I should have brought one. But it has uh, resources for every Sunday of the year and for special occasions and uh, a wealth of special prayers, confessions um, for specific times of the year like Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, if that's something that you would like that's available through Fortress Press. You might even ask your pastor if he has a copy or she has a copy. And if they do, maybe they'll lend it to you and you could look it over. Uh, Evangelical Lutheran Worship, your hymnal. And then there's a little book which I read when I was in the seminary. And that's been 53 years ago since I graduated. Oh, a little tiny book. He sent leanness. He sent leanness. It comes from one of the Psalms where the Lord heard the prayers of Israel, but he sent leanness to their souls. It's a book on prayers and every prayer is wrong. You have to figure out what it is. Now, my favorite prayer is the one before worship. Oh, God, don't let the sermon be too long. <laughs> I've thought that when I've sat in church sometimes. Another prayer. Um, inscription on a stone in a cemetery. Here lies our son, killed by a drunk. Thy will be done. <laughs> oh. So at any rate, the whole book, and it's a little tiny book, and if you go on um, Amazon. Amazon, thank you, they actually had some copies. There's a little paperback. Uh, some of them were, uh, paper, one of them was a hardcover, and three or four dollars for a copy because it's a small thing. But it is out of print. So if you're interested in getting a book which has a, a foreword to animals, get your paws off this work. <laughs> it's intended for humans. Um, and don't eat the binding, too, I think he said. It, it, it's a book to laugh through and sort of cry through, too, because a lot of times if people say things that just really take away everything you're trying to do. I had an occasion to visit a woman whose husband had died, and uh, this is when I was a vicar, 
And I went there all full of vim and vitality. You know, I knew all the answers. I was going to tell her all about the resurrection and how Jesus lives and we live too and we have hope. And I did. And she said, I hope so. (laughs) I was devastated. I mean, I had done this wonderful, marvelous prayer. I hope so. (laughs) So uh, you never know what's going to happen when we uh, come off. I'm going to fan out these cards and let you pick one. We had uh, two opposite extremes. Uh, The card that was pulled on this side had a funeral. The best friend had died and you were asked to pray. This group had, we had a birth of a child and you were asked to pray. My goal in getting you uh, talking through these things is uh, you're going to the hospital and you know the baby's been born. So you can sort of prepare a little bit, think of some words to say. Uh, you're going to the funeral home. You can know, besides saying, I'm sorry, uh, your best friend, he meant so much to me, and I know I can never know how much he meant to you, to the parents, kind of a thing. Um, now, uh, those would be situations where uh, you're not surprised by prayer because you are going to that place, and By going there, you're sort of opening up yourself to share the love of God in that situation. Other times, prayers come at you from out of nowhere. And like I say, there's nothing wrong with saying, God, I really don't know how to begin to talk with you about this or how I can share the love of God in the way that would be best for all of us but we're hurting here or we're rejoicing here, whichever the phrase might be, and uh, then go on to say what you would hope would be the outcome, that something of God's love and peace and presence be with you to comfort a person, or that the challenge of the life ahead be blessed by your spirit and uh, give strength to the parents. We were laughing here about the parents uh, were in it for 18 years after the baby was born. Uh, so, But I thank you so much for coming. Uh, I hope you learned something. <laughs>